Okay, I think we're live. Uh, welcome Argonauts, friends of the Argonauts, strangers and everyone in between. Um, welcome to our live Q&A session on the topic disrupting the airline industry, the high risk and greater rewards. Um, we're live here on the Riverside studio. We are going to record the session and then we're going to upload it to the Argonauts community platform for everyone to watch it later, to share it with colleagues or friends or whoever you would like to. Um, next to being live on Riverside, we're also live on YouTube. Hello everyone from YouTube and thank you for joining us. We hope that you will enjoy the session. Um, let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Mimosa. Within the Argonauts world, I'm the um, event and community manager, and I'm going to host today's show. Uh, and um, I'm going to guide us through this session. The session is split up in two parts. First, it's going to be the interview where Alvaro, our guest speaker, and I, who I will introduce to you in a second, where we will have a conversation on the topic. And then there will be a second part, an open discussion where you can um, bring in your thoughts, your questions, any ideas or anything that you would like to share with us. Um, you can also submit your questions during the first part into the chat in the bottom right corner and then we will answer all your questions at the end of the session. Um, if we are at the second part, you can also join us. There is a little button that says call in. Um, if you click on that button, that means that you are joining the live session. So make sure your camera is on and make sure you only click the button when we are in the second part in the open discussion. Um, otherwise, you would join us in the live Q&A session, um, which is reserved for Alvaro. Um, all right. And without any further ado, I would like to introduce to you our guest speaker of today. Um, please welcome Alvaro Nogueira de Oliveira. Hello, Alvaro. Hello, Mimosa. Hello, everyone. Welcome. <laughs> welcome and thank you for being here. Um, I would like to read out quickly your bio so that everyone knows um, who you are and what you do and that we just get to know you a little bit better. Um, so, Alvaro, you are a very passionate pilot and a SEAL with more than 30 years of experience in the airline industry. Um, you're the founder and CEO of Move Airways AG. And throughout your career, you have led teams with up to 800 pilots. You have extensive experience as a chief executive officer and accountable manager and a member of the advisory board. Um, you have helped airlines grow and prepare for the next steps. And you were founding Zool, uh, which was rewarded the best airline in the world by TripAdvisor last year. And you co-founded Modern Transport, Aero de Carga SA. And you have worked for airline companies such as Varic Brazilian Airlines, Azul Airlines, Ryanair and Sky Express Airlines. Um, that is very impressive, Alvaro. Would you like to add anything to that? Thank you, Mimosa. Yeah. Uh, just that uh, aviation is about passion. I believe uh, most of the people that work in aviation uh, is passionate about the industry, and I'm not an exception to that rule. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, I mean, with 30 years of experience in one airline industry, um, I believe, I bet you are very passionate about it. And that makes you the expert of today. And I'm very excited to have you here and to hear about all of the experience that you gathered throughout um, those years of working in that industry. And um, yeah, I do, I would say, let's start with the Q&A session. And for the beginnings, we always do a little icebreakers to get to know you a little bit better um, and to know who you are, what your passion and interests are. Um, our first icebreaker question would be, what was the best advice you have ever heard or was ever given to you? Well, there are many along uh, so many years of um, uh, work experience, but I can, I can mention one that I love. 
uh, that came from a good friend of mine that is just uh, keep calm and smile. So <laughs> this is something that can be used in many different situations in the most diverse uh, situations that you can be off and it works very well. So just keep calm and smile and it is very uh, matching the aviation uh, concept. Interesting. Can you share how, in what way it's matching it? Yeah, sure. Because uh, as a pilot or as an airline executive, we are always uh, subjected to some sort of disruptions. Mm. And uh, the best way to solve a disruption is to keep calm and smile. All right. That sounds good. <laughs> um, then let's keep calm and smile today for the rest of the session, I would say. Great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, the second question is, what does community mean to you? Well, community is for me a, always a group of uh, persons that share common behaviors and interests. Basically, mm -hmm. this is what makes a community a real community, right? So yeah. uh, sharing things, sharing behaviors, sharing interests, uh, exchanging experiences. Uh, that's it. Simple. Thank you. And as icebreaker, three things that you're grateful for. Well, first one is uh, my family, mm -hmm. and then uh, the opportunities I have uh, uh, from my work in terms of uh, give contribution to a better world. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last one, all the persons that I cross it on my way, that mm. uh, contribute to my learning. I think those oh, are the three. wonderful things to, to be grateful for. Um, thank you so much for sharing these answers with us. And yeah, that was the icebreaker section. And now let's dive into the topic. A um, little reminder, the topic of today is disrupting the airline industry, the high risk but greater rewards. So, Alvaro, we heard um, that you have a lot of experience in that industry, 30 years. You have probably seen experience a lot of things and a lot of changes. Can you share with us how the industry changed in um, those 30 years and beyond that 30 years? How was it decades ago and how is the airline industry today? Yeah, sure, Mimosa. Uh, to answer this question, I would like to put in the perspective, let's say, a quick overview of the, the history of the airline mm -hmm. industry, which is a amazing history. Uh, this is an industry of um, a bit more than 100 years old. Uh, but in fact, the real development began after the Second World War. Mm -hmm. So on the last uh, year of the war, there was uh, a convention uh, held in uh, Chicago and they developed uh, from this convention a, a set of rules that are displayed in a big document plus its annexes. The annexes are still nowadays being implemented and increased. And this is uh, what made the industry one of the most heavily regulated industry. Mm -hmm. And also this uh, is why uh, the industry is an expensive industry because uh, everything you want to do in an airplane, every piece or part you want to put in an airplane must be certified. And this certification mm -hmm. process has a cost involved on it. And this is all aiming uh, one single target which is uh, decrease the risk of the operation and contribute okay. to the safety. And mm. the results are amazing. If you take statistics from nowadays and compare them with uh, the 40s, the, the 50s and the 60s, you see how this industry improved along the time. So uh, in fact, the heavy development began after that. So late 40s, during the 50s, uh, this is when the jet age came and the industry had to adapt. 
so new regulation, new ways of uh, learning and uh, creating rules. Uh, then came the 70s, supersonic flight, uh, jumbo airplanes. And the thing is that until there, uh, the, reg the regulatory of the industry was not only in terms of uh, operation or setting up, was also uh, in the market, which was mm -hmm. not that good. So the uh, legacy traditional players were heavily subsidized or even owned by its estates. And the bilateral agreement between two countries were heavily regulated. Uh, the number of frequencies allowed for each party, even the number of seats that each party could put in the market every week. Uh, the fares also uh, were regulated. And this uh, brought a lot of inefficiency to the industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, on top of that, there was a complex service. Uh, so, the initiative to change this came in 1979 in the US when the Deregulation Act uh, has been established and this is the first step into the free market. And this uh, really changed the way the industry uh, evolved. Uh, during the 80s, this was uh, the transition time where the, this deregulation has, has been applied, uh, beginning to go uh, outside the borders of the US. Uh, during the 90s, they were consolidated. And this brought uh, more competition, more efficiency. Uh, new, new companies came into the, the scene. And this is uh, what made the industry a mass transport industry and companies that were inefficient they got bust we can mention here pan am which was a symbol of the mm -hmm. the, the airline era and pan am was a victim of uh, their pioneering because they were uh, the ones who were exploring new territories and they needed to build airports to build hotels for crew and passengers layover they needed to build radio stations for navigation. And at the end, uh, they were a monster with uh, a diverse range of uh, activities and not focused on a core business. Mm -hmm. And they were not able to survive this new uh, un right. unregulated market. But there are very po many positive aspects uh, uh, that resulted from it. Uh, the appearance of the low cost companies uh, the pioneer of that was Southwest Airlines in the U.S. Uh, Southwest established the low-cost short-haul model, benchmark. Uh, it's amazing to say that they were 47 straight years uh, facing profitability on their business. And this model have been copied and pasted all over the world with some minor adjustments here and there. Mm. And so for the short haul, this is the model that you see. And this is the model that brought uh, a popularity of air transport. Uh, this uh, late 90s and early 2000s, uh, this was what uh, uh, damaged a bit the traditional companies. And the traditional companies along the 2000s, 2010s, they did, ha they did not have any other option than adapt. And so initially, a short haul flight on a traditional company was uh, very on a very comfortable airplane with leg room. Uh, you can even have the uh, uh, dinner on board. Hmm. And nowadays, they are doing the same as the low cost companies, putting more people in, uh, on board the airplanes, charging for uh, every service in an unbundled way. And uh, even though they have a cost structure uh, high and they are uh, having initiatives of creating their subsidiaries, their low cost subsidiaries. Uh, so that's where we are nowadays uh, until the pandemic hit. But it's important, I believe, for you all to understand how the, the development uh, of the industry occurred on the last decades. 
Yeah, thank you very much for taking us on this journey and explaining everything, um, how it evolved. Um, now, we said that you are disrupting the industry. Can you share with us on how you're planning to disrupt the industry with your new company move? What will you do different than all, all the airline companies um, that are on the market now? Yeah, sure. We, we started uh, to think about move in 2018. Mm -hmm. So we are a group of, uh, let's say, visionaries. And mm -hmm. we were discussing among ourselves what would be uh, the next area of disruption in this industry. And uh, without any doubt, the long haul flying uh, is the target, not only for us. And uh, pop the make the long haul popular is, is something mm -hmm. that uh, is uh, in the radar screen of uh, many other initiatives as well. Mm -hmm. But differently from the short haul model that Southwest introduced, the long haul, uh, in our opinion, is not going to have one single benchmark because this uh, it de is dependent on where you are, uh, who you want to serve, what you want to do. And we believe in four to five different uh, models. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are building MOVE, expecting that our model will be one of these four or five benchmarks. So basically, MOVE uh, is uh, over four pillars. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is uh, decentralized, uh, low-cost operation. And I can explain in details this uh, uh, later on. Mm -hmm. The second pillar is a point-to-point -point service. Uh, linking uh, secondary catchment areas in Europe with either primary or secondary catchment areas overseas. Uh, the third one is uh, seamless personalized customer experience because we believe that uh, uh, is not because you are a low cost company that you must offer uh, low quality service. Yeah. And Azu is the proof of that. Mm -hmm. And the last and most important, uh, most disruptive pillar is the fourth one, which is the leverage of the digital economy. Mm. So uh, this is the four main uh, pillars that we will be setting on. And we understand that uh, serving those markets on a point to point uh, will be very convenient for the users as uh, you can fly directly, for example, from Basel here in Switzerland to New York without mm -hmm. the need to fly to one of the big hubs. And we can save you three to four hours of your trip time uh, on, a comfortable, on a comfortable airplane, on a direct flight. And this is what basically we want to we wanna do. All right. Um, in in a um, previous conversation that we had, you explained to me why the other all the other airline industries have these um, layovers between big cities. Can you share that again with our viewers? What is the reason that you cannot fly directly from Basel to New York? Why do we have to have a stop while you are saying there is no need for a stop? We can fly directly. Yeah, well, uh, there are two things to be considered here. The first one is the new technology. Mm -hmm. So uh, Airbus is launching a new product uh, from 2023, which is the A321 XLR from extra long range. And with this airplane, you can fly profitable uh, until 10 hours of flight. Mm -hmm. uh, this was not available before. Uh, there are new engines installed on this airplane that uh, burns less fuel and uh, produces uh, less emission, consequently, and less noise. And mm -hmm. the, the seat cost per, per mile uh, of this airplane uh, is very similar to uh, the, a wide body one. Uh, and the, the reason that you should uh, lay over in a big hub is because the traditional companies, they built this model. The, this model is called in the industry, the hub and spoke model. Mm -hmm. So they have a big airport that they not dominate and they bring passengers from all over the network into this airport 
and they provide connectivity and that's the way uh, they fill the big airplanes in order to fly the long haul flights so mm -hmm. today if you want to fly from Basel to New York you either can take a flight to Frankfurt or to Amsterdam or to Paris or to Heathrow in London mm -hmm. or you can drive or take a train down to Zurich and uh, your journey will be long because of that uh, in the other in the other hand if we can offer now because of technology is available a direct flight and of course Basel is a smaller market I cannot put a 350 seats airplane there because I just not gonna be able to fill it mm -hmm. unless I create a hub there yeah uh, but a 190 seats airplane uh, I, uh, I have the capacity to to fill it and be profitable so mm -hmm. that that is uh, basically the concept all right um let's go back for pillars of your company that you talked about. um the decentralized low-cost um operation service um let's start with these two ones can you explain or a little bit more um how you're planning to um to um, put that out into the world and to integrate that into your new company and in, in, in a new way that was not there before. Yeah, we must assure. So the decentralization is exactly bypassing the hub and mm -hmm. spoke system on a system that is called hub bypass. So mm -hmm. we want to fly uh, direct from secondary points to overseas. And uh, the destination it can be a, a primary, can be a hub or a secondary, but the origin here in Europe will be always a secondary market. And the point to point is because it's a direct flight. There is no stopover. So this is also to provide you uh, mm -hmm. customers uh, with convenience. Um, and the, the digital economy, which was the number four, um, that would be the blockchain solution that you have for your company, right? Yeah, right. We, we used to say that we are developing move to be a tech company with wings. So we want to apply here. <laughs> That's a great one. <laughs> yeah, we want to apply here uh, leading edge technology, artificial intelligence. Uh, mm -hmm. So we are writing on a white sheet of paper so we can take what is most modern in the in the industry and bring it to the company mm -hmm. and uh, we just plug in my battery here just one sec okay. <laughs> sorry and the uh, blockchain is one of the solutions that we are mm -hmm. looking at i believe uh, we believe in 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 the future with mm -hmm. blockchain because of the security, because of the possibility of having uh, most efficient transactions with, without intermediaries. Mm -hmm. And we are aiming to launch a security token offering, which is a democratic funding model in order to fund the airline on the major part. Uh, we'll be a mix of traditional funding and uh, digital funding. And there are other uh, appliances also to to blockchain like uh, maintenance control uh, you know in, in an airplane you have parts that are controlled by cycles others by flight time and once you run a smart contract for example to control uh, the the inventory the stocks the, the spare parts and the and the parts that are requiring maintenance uh, this is uh, bringing a different way of managing mm -hmm. and we want to use also blockchain for improving uh, management decisions to uh, make them more agile uh, more quick and more efficient so we believe on that awesome um yeah two i think two q and a's ago um we had daniel wolf as a guest speaker and we talked about blockchain and he explained the different um, ways how to use blockchain and how it uh, would benefit companies. So it's great to hear another example and see another company that is already using blockchain um, or is integrating blockchain into their company. And yeah, it's great to see that 
this technology is just being used more and more and um, yeah, it's going to be the norm hopefully today because it sounds like a very good technology to have in your company. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Um, now, we know we're all in a pandemic and we know that the airline company is one of the companies that was hit the hardest from the pandemic. Um, can you share your experience a little bit about how it was for you to like follow your plan on starting and launching a new company and was the pandemic what what challenges pandemic with it and were there maybe some advantages um, or some positive impacts on your company that the pandemic brought yeah sure uh, well we were developing this project since 2018 mm -hmm. uh, pre-pandemic uh, in a scenario that uh, is uh, much different than it is today. But when the pandemic uh, knocked in, uh, we were uh, initially uh, scared about what was uh, mm -hmm. to come, right? Uh, but uh, soon we realized it that uh, we must reassess our project to see uh, new opportunities, uh, new ways of uh, launching the company. And we quickly found uh, an opportunity for an, a niche, mar niche markets in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, launching initially a uh, short haul operation from those niche markets without competition mm -hmm. and uh, using the same basic concepts. And uh, this is something that is very important because it's, it's going to be a jump start and a way to prove our concept mm. uh, because uh, we are always attempt to what the experts uh, were saying initially they were expecting uh, a recovery on a v-shape so first wave of uh, the virus and the first wave and a quick recovery and mm. we all know that this did not happen no the second <laughs> wave came unfortunately not and uh, the industry is, is, is really hardly damaged. Mm. And now the most common agreed way of recovery is an L shape. So it's a sm sm slow recovery mm -hmm. and the recovery will be for the short haul first, then mm -hmm. a long haul leisure second. Mm -hmm. And at last the long haul business. And even though, uh, Nobody's sure what's going to happen with the business traveler in the future because of uh, the technology. Mm -hmm. We still believe that there will be a recovery, uh, mm -hmm. but not maybe for the same levels as 2019 before 2025, 2026, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything is, is uh, ahead of us is still gray. So we, we, we don't, mm -hmm. it's a guess. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, as you asked in your second part of your question, the positive aspects of that. Mm -hmm. So the industry uh, is uh, on its knees nowadays. Uh, there will be a recovery for sure because this is a resilient industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the positive aspects are that the assets are available in the market and at lower prices. When I say assets, uh, we can uh, understand the airplanes uh, to be leased on lower rates. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, IT uh, systems uh, at lower rates. Uh, we have uh, uh, expert workforce available in the market because the companies that are currently existing, they are reducing capacity. They are uh, laying off people. Uh, we have also, uh, because of this reduction in capacity, airport slots available. So it's a, it's really a good time to start an airline and enter the market <laughs> with a debt-free company. Mm. That's uh, that's that's the way we learn uh, the situation yeah. currently. Yeah. So the pandemic actually then, in the end of the day, played in in your favor. Yeah, um, which is, is great and I'm happy for you. Uh, a little bit about um, you as a leadership and your mindset as a leadership. Um, I'm, I assume that it must have been difficult to 
um, motivate your team and keep them motivated to work towards a goal that is rather uncertain. Because as you said, the recovery will be very slow. And when the recovery will start, how long it will take. So how is it for you to work towards a goal that is uncertain and also keep your team based on the goal and keep going and moving forward? Well, uh, I am a, an optimistic person uh, by nature <laughs> and uh, also a one of, uh, let's say, my characteristics is uh, good resilience. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I believe uh, a lot in this uh, model that we developed. And what I always uh, transmit to, to my, my partners that are the other founders and the team that is involved, uh, that we, we should keep calm and smile. So we should keep going, uh, mm -hmm. be attempted, adapt, have flexibility, uh, but believe in what we believe and, uh, and, and go for it. So that's, that's how we, we, we are dealing with this situation. That's uh, mm -hmm. my way also of uh, leading this and uh, getting, getting them motivated and, and uh, let's say bringing credibility. I think the passion that you mentioned earlier um, that people bring, like people who work in this industry bring with them um, is a big part in, in this mindset, in this um, moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, then we already talked a little bit about um, disrupting the businesses and how you want to do it with your um, new company. Now the airline company is big and old and has been there for so many years and there are giant companies like for example Lufthansa and now you're coming into the market with a new idea. You want to disrupt the market. You want to bring something new. Um, can you share with us are there any pushbacks from the market or do you see any any challenges um, joining the market or disrupting the market. Um, can you share a little bit about that uh, topic with us? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, normally, let's consider a non-pandemic uh, environment. And uh, I have participated already in three airline startups mm -hmm. in a non-pandemic environment. And mm -hmm. normally, the competition uh, goes aggressively towards you. Mm -hmm. uh, they normally reserve a certain amount of money to be wasted and they uh, mirror your flights uh, selling seats for nothing in order to mm -hmm. damage your your start. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't believe this is going to happen because the players are struggling to survive highly indebted. They don't have money to waste. And in the other hand, we are not competing directly with them because uh, we will be entering a market that nobody is uh, flying mm -hmm. uh, directly at least. So they are flying through a hub, but uh, directly uh, we, we, will not, we are not gonna have competition. And so this is again, another positive aspect of entering the market on the, on the coming two years, I would say. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Um, well, all the luck for you and that you don't get too much pushback and just can move forward with your company. Um, let's have a little outlook into the future. Um, now we hear that due to the pandemic, a lot of industries will change, a lot of industries will adapt. And um, you already said that the recovery for the airline industry will be a longer one. That means that the industry itself is already changing and has been changing. Can you share with us how it will um, change in the future? What will be new? What old things will um, fall away? And um, we had also a question from a um, viewer submitted from Juan Zunino. He wants to know the past is always a backload. What would be the key concept in a new airline in post-COVID world? Yeah, sure, Mimosa. For this, uh, so I want to uh, come back with you uh, along the history in order mm -hmm. to show you how resilient this industry is 
and the capacity to adapt. So mm -hmm. I don't want to be uh, very long on my comments, but just uh, touching some important points along the history. So on the late 60s, early 70s, uh, there were uh, some uh, cases of uh, airplanes hijack. Mm -hmm. So every week, uh, people were hearing about an airliner that has been hijacked for political reasons or for some other reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, so the industry had to adapt in terms of improving security. Mm -hmm. And uh, new security measures were in place. Uh, this increased the cost. Uh, this changed the airport infrastructure, uh, but is there. And it, since then, it's working fine. Uh, then uh, we can jump to 91, the Iraq war, uh, where the uh, oil barrel uh, was going up and up, disrupting because, uh, you know, oil kerosene is, uh, is one of the major costs of, uh, of an airline. And uh, this uh, also hit the airline industry. And uh, so the, the, the airline adapted. Uh, so new, more efficient engines came into into scene, and so uh, the the industry managed to to bypass these uh, difficulties. And uh, many, and I can tell you, many uh, local health crises also occurred. Uh, that was called the uh, local epidemics. Uh, mm -hmm. In Africa, in South America, like the cholera one. Uh, that uh, uh, so European companies, American companies uh, were flying into those regions and they needed to adapt. Uh, there are some countries uh, that demand until nowadays uh, yellow fever vaccination to clear immigrations. Uh, as a pilot, I managed to fly to some countries where we needed to spray the airplanes with permethrin before departure and mm -hmm. deliver the empty bottles on arrival. Uh, and so and the industry was always adapting. Uh, then the mm -hmm. SARS uh, was uh, less serious than COVID, but uh, there was also some measures taken. Uh, the September 11 terrorist attacks uh, was the worst one so far until the mm -hmm. COVID. Uh, this, for the first time, grounded uh, the airline industry in the U.S. Uh, caused a lot of damage uh, also for some players that got bust, got damaged. Mm -hmm. uh, the industry rec recovered. So the industry is resilient. Uh, COVID was something never thought. Uh, nobody mm -hmm. one can ev ever thought that one day uh, a, a world pandemic would ground the airline industry and remove the revenues from one day to the other. Right. and put the industry on its knees. So th mm. what we are living now is, is really something very, very particular. Uh, things will be changing uh, in terms of uh, a health pass that should be established soon. Mm -hmm. uh, we, the vaccines will be uh, required for, for border crossing, for traveling. But of course, this will this will last for some years until situation is under control, normalized. Uh, mm -hmm. But also, this will bring more cost to the players, more cost to infrastructure. Uh, the, the 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 companies they will need to have, and they are already adopting uh, a way of disinfecting disinfecting the airplanes uh, more regularly. So hygiene is something that will change. Uh, the users will be more demanding as well and this is mm -hmm. another positive aspect of our mm -hmm. of our model because we will be offering direct flights and less trip time and less exposition so you don't need to land in a hub disembark clear security again change terminal board again you just go straight mm -hmm. uh, but we believe that some rules uh, will be there to stay uh, like this uh, EGN thing, uh, because uh, the, the masks used is temporary uh, until the situation can can be under control. But th there will be some years still until we reach the, let's say, the normal. And 
we will see some, uh, let's say, adoption of digitalization mm -hmm. in order to avoid you to, to, to touch some, uh, uh, some points of the travel chain, for example. You can, on an app, identify yourself, clear passport control, clear security without touching anything. So the, the technology will help uh, mm -hmm. this. And this is something that is coming to stay. Automatic boarding, for example, you, you just have your, mm -hmm. your app and uh, this is already happening. Uh, there are new initiatives like, for example, the uh, toilet door on board that opens automatically on, on, uh, with a, a, a sensor. Uh, this kind of stuff will, will, will happen, we'll, we, we will mm. see, but always based on new technologies. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's another event that is making the industry to adapt and the industry will recover because there is no strong economy without a strong air services. Uh, basically, this is historically what what is, it is what it, mm. what it is. Yeah. Um, I have, I personally have no doubt that the industry will recover because um, you can somehow feel it in the air that people cannot wait for this pandemic to be over and to be able to fly again and to go on vacation and to visit family or friends who are living in the in another country or further away. Um, so without a doubt, I believe that as soon as the pandemic is over, then everyone will be booking flights and we will be all on vacation. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Yeah. So you just mentioned a little bit earlier that um, the users and the customers will be more demanding. Um, can you elaborate more on that? Why do you think they will be more demanding? And can you already say what demands we will have? Well, I believe that uh, things like, for example, massive boarding, uh, mm -hmm. where you stay in a, in a crowd of 200 people. Uh, this is the, the so-called advanced boarding on, used on low-cost companies. So you go uh, in a corridor and you, mm -hmm. you have everything crowded there and uh, the companies need to turn around the airplane fast. And as soon as the last passenger deplanes, the first will board. Uh, without cleaning the airplane, so without uh, doing uh, so the adequate hygiene. I believe mm -hmm. uh, mainly on this first months or first uh, years, maybe uh, people will be more attempt and more demanding because you are boarding an airplane. So you you touch your your head on the headrest, uh, you mm -hmm. touch the armrest. So there should be some way uh, of hygienize that, uh, that, that parts, uh, those parts before, uh, the next passenger boards. And I believe this will be, uh, the way the passengers will be demanding to be more, let's say, uh, well treated and, and, mm. and uh, the health to be cared, uh, in a more adequate way. Uh, this is just an example. Yeah. All right, thank you for that. Um, we are already at the end of this Q&A session. It went by so quickly. I very much enjoyed this talk. Um, are there any last words that you would like to share with our viewers um, for this part before we go over to the second part? Yeah, just that we, we believe in, uh, in the new era in the airline uh, industry. Uh, move that we are building uh, is a company that is coming to to last is, is coming to provide a good level of service mm -hmm. uh, always uh, with the safety in mind good customer service and uh, cost efficient company uh, not only move but uh, we believe in the in this industry as an important component of uh, countries or uh, areas economy and uh, we, we believe in the recovery and uh, we believe that we, the services will be there and uh, this will be an upturn now in terms of uh, of quality of service uh, in, in all aspects uh, the recovery will be slow the prices will be difficult so the companies mm -hmm. will need to recover uh, this uh, waste time uh, but uh, anyway 
things will keep moving. Travel industry is uh, something fundamental for our lives. We all need holidays once in a while. Because once, when we say that the airline industry has been hit, hardly hit, it was not the mm -hmm. airline industry, but the travel industry as, uh, as a general. Uh, the, yeah. the hotels, the travel agents, travel agents that are partners, the airlines and uh, uh, all, all services involved on that. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe in the recovery. This industry is resilient and is part of our daily lives. Yes. All right. Thank you, Alvaro. And well, this is already the end of the first part of our interview. And now we can go over to an open discussion. So to our viewers, if you have any questions that you would like to ask Alvaro, you can either type them in the chat or you can click on all you have to write on your question. You will join live Q and A session. So you're on. If you don't want to join with the video, you can just submit your question in the live chat. Um, I'm just going to continue ask you a few um, other questions, Alvaro, and then we see if anyone has other questions or not. Um, so you were talking about. One of the demands that users are having is um, a better, let's say, service, like you uh, mentioned the, the hygiene part. Um, and also mentioned earlier that the service is decentralized within your company, that that is one of your pillars. Can you explain how you can decentralize the service but still guarantee that the service is on a high level um, and is expecting the, the demands that we as user as, and we as clients will have in the future. Yeah, so this is an interesting question. Uh, we, we say uh, the services will be unbundled services. So mm -hmm. we say uh, seamless personalized experience. Uh, this means that uh, it's a customized service and with the help of technology, we can uh, deal with the logistics that uh, is needed in order to provide such services. I mentioned an example. Uh, in the long haul, uh, nine, ten hours uh, of flight, mm -hmm. we will need to offer a product for the business traveler or uh, the, the customers that want more comfort during their, their journey. But we will be able to, to offer a personalized service. If you are a business traveler sitting in, uh, uh, we, we don't call it business class, but let's say the analog of business class, but you want to have your cheeseburger for your dinner, just order it, mm -hmm. we can provide you. In the other hand, if you are with your family in economy class, uh, but you, you like to have a nice uh, three-course dinner, uh, we just order and we can serve you. It's an unbundled service. The, the, the services are separated, uh, are charged separately. If you don't want, if you don't want nothing, you, you can have nothing. So it's up to you. So you built your, your product and we offer right. you and we, we serve you. So that's uh, when we say unbundled services. This is uh, this is the quality we want to to you want we want you to be happy flying with us to feel mm -hmm. at home flying with us to feel relaxed uh, and uh, so we are there to 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 support you to serve you and uh, that's our that's our mindset. So uh, customer service, which has been left behind. For many years in many in many other operators i'm sure uh when you were just talking that customers can build their own um service or demands i somehow i had the the picture of uh, a lego in my head where i was like i take this and put it and i take that and put it and then i have my plane and then i can fly <laughs> um just sharing that that i had this picture in my head that's and, exactly um, the point mimosa that's yeah. your life. you put your lego and you go yeah put your lego and we all love legos right <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, at the beginning of the interview, you talked a little bit about sustainability. Your new model of the long hauls without um, a layover is 
contributing to more sustainability. Can you elaborate and share a little bit more on that topic with us? Sustainability is key. This is very mm -hmm. important. But uh, we must all understand that we depend on the available technology. So we are moving towards a carbon-free industry, but this will take decades still, I would say 20 years. Uh, nowadays, what can be done is the use of latest technology, which is uh, the lowest ever uh, emission per seat in terms of carbon because of the new efficient engines, mm -hmm. uh, the lowest level of noise ever because the same efficient engines, and mm -hmm. some practices inside the company towards the uh, use of plastics, towards recycling. Uh, so that's within our reach. I believe in hydrogen power for passenger transport. I don't believe in mm -hmm. the electrical one, uh, just for short regional flights, because if you consider the technology available today to recharge a battery and to consume the energy of a battery, uh, will not allow you to fly 10 hours and in one hour uh, depart back for another 10 hours of flight. Mm -hmm. I believe in the hydrogen power and this is now being uh, developed. Uh, hydrogen power is uh, the power that uh, powers the rockets. You must all have seen already a rocket launch. Uh, there are normally uh, two hydrogen tanks laterally positioned that mm -hmm. must be kept refrigerated uh, because they are using uh, liquid hydrogen there. Uh, in the airline industry, this will be a bit different. Uh, we don't know yet if there will be a hydrogen tank or some sort of carrying, let's say even water that can uh, suffer hydrolysis in flight and produce hydrogen for consumption by the engine. But definitely, Hydrogen is uh, now uh, being highlighted as uh, the next source of fuel for the airline industry. But as I mentioned, uh, we don't expect this before 20 years from now. That definitely sounds great. And we're all going to be just a little bit more patient um, and wait for another couple of years um, until we get there. Has a Last question, and then we can wrap it up today. Um, you were sharing earlier about all the new um, that are coming, and can you share a little bit more of the technologies that are coming? So you mentioned already the um, toilet door that will be open um, automatically. Then it was the app that you can use your plane. Do you have? Can you share any other technologies? Um, in the in yeah, on, that on the ground on the ground i can mention the concept of the smart airport so mm -hmm. the smart airport is an airport that you do everything on your own so mm -hmm. you checked in your baggage you clear immigration you clear security you board without mm -hmm. touching nothing this is already a reality uh, mm -hmm. but uh, a reality in terms of uh, is existing technology, but not yet fully implemented. But now with, uh, with the pandemic, this will be expedited. The implementation will be expedited. Yeah. Uh, other, other technologies that can be seen uh, will be uh, the integration of the customer with the airline in terms of uh, uh, fully uh, an app that will provide you with full services, mm -hmm. you, 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 you all uh, should travel and you should all have passed already to a situation where you need to cancel your flight or change the date of your flight. Mm -hmm. And if you do this today, you need to pay a fine because you are changing the flight and you are subjected to the new fare of the new flight, which is 110% of the time higher than the one you have, right? This is on purpose. We want to make this simple. Uh, we want to allow you to do everything through an app. And uh, uh, we, we want to allow you also to put, to offer uh, your the seat uh, that you are not using, to offer 
the directly to someone else uh, then you can be refunded or uh, make it very easy for you to switch to the new one if there is some advanced time uh, there will be absolutely no nothing to to be charged for you uh, so this is uh, this is a new new concepts of uh, doing uh, business and to offering services and technology would allow us to do this uh, mm -hmm. other op other options that we have for example uh, we want to be uh, able to through an app advise you that you are stuck on traffic and your flight will be leaving in one and a half hour and it should be at the airport mm -hmm. in 30 minutes just to as an awareness mm -hmm. for you in mm -hmm. the other hand, if you arrive early in the airport, we through through the app, we know where you are and we want to be able to offer you a coffee in a coffee shop uh, right. on company <laughs> on company cost. And so this kind of stuff. So we are developing a different level of service. That sounds wonderful. It sounds like, uh, yeah, it sounds like this technology is saving a lot of time and a lot of because Flying, like going on vacation is, um, and we all love it, but just the, yeah, the, the stress the to main, get there. Yeah. yeah, the main the main issue that uh, airlines have is uh, ways of communicating with customer. Uh, this should be an uh, open line of communication and uh, telling you mm -hmm. if uh, all the time if your flight is late, uh, what, what can you expect? Uh, so uh, communication, you need to be communicating all the time and uh, quality communication for what is important. I believe we lost Mimosa. She should be back soon. We're just continuing while she comes back. So the the use of technology is is uh, something that from now on will be uh, the focus on all the players uh, because this saves uh, costs, this uh, improves uh, the efficiency, and uh, this can uh, e even contribute to a better on time performance, to uh, to a better level of service that uh, all the players should uh, always aim to provide to you as users. And there is no limit for that. that this is what is important. So I think we are reaching our, our time here. And uh, I'd like to thank you. And um, I'm available for any further questions that you, you might have or if you might interact. Uh, just let me know. I'll be glad to, to answer. And uh, that's about it. Thank you very much for, for your uh, participation here. And uh, I'm looking forward for flying with MOVE.